Um, my name is Jeff Carroll, and of course, you see that I run my mouth a lot, but um, I am a person who has been black his whole life and involved myself in the process, right? So I, I, I involve myself in my social situation and the situation of other people, and I happen to write comic books, films, and books in the process of doing that. Um, my latest book is um, coming to comic book stores um, next month. It's called The Last Harlemite centers around an earthquake fault line that I never knew I worked around for the 15 years that I worked at the world famous Apollo Theater, all right? So I expose the truth in the fun fiction that I have, so enjoy it. All right, great. Woo! Mr. Gifty, you are next. Yes, uh, well first, give yourselves a round of applause for making it to the last panel of the evening. <laughs> That's what I was with, 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 with a little energy, thank you for. Uh, yes, yeah, still, we're trying to get to the front of the bus, but, but well, we thank you. We thank you for coming out. Uh, with that, I would just want to say peace and blessings. My name is Nasi Gifte. Uh, I'll just consider myself uh, an empowering uh, Afrofuturistic visionary uh, who is uh, engineered by trade, uh, educator by the day, and a comic book writer. Uh, of an Afrofuturism series called P.B. Soldier and Jason, the rose that grew from the concrete at night. Um, I'm a father, engineer, and um, also founder of a black, a black comic and animation film festival called Kim Fest, where we just celebrated our 10th anniversary uh, in Miami, Florida. So I'm definitely, definitely proud of that. You know, so. And I'll just pass the mic. Hi, my name is David Crownson. I'm the founder of Kingwood Comics and the creator of Harriet Tubman Demon Slayer. Um, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, like Don Levin, I've been black since 2014. No, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, born and raised in New Jersey. And uh, yeah, just going to keep writing, creating comic books. I have a book coming out called Nightmare in Newark and Killer Bee. It's also coming out. And uh, Harriet Tubman Demon Slayer is being developed to be a TV series uh, with uh, Prentice Penny, who created Insecure, on this small channel called Disney that nobody watches. <laughs> and that's that. And thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Oh, oh, God. God. Where are you going? Where are you? What up, y'all? Um, yeah, peace family. I am a man. I'm a lot of things. Um, a creator, musician, artist, so I'm a game developer, I have my own studio, uh, just released the game, working on some more, um, oh, all oh, right, yeah, so this is released a game called Tetra Tactics, yeah, you can go copy it on Steam, um, also I'm the Oakland director for the Hidden Genius Project, uh, if you don't know about us, definitely look us up, we train and mentor young black boys in technology, leadership, and, uh, business. Um, as well, like I said, I do music, so music for games, music for film, um, and then also an educator in all the different fields. Uh, and then I also do a little bit of events as well, so game director for Afro Comic Con and also working on some more events that will be coming up soon. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> My name is Carl Leonardo. I am the former executive director for Black and Gaming. Uh, the Black Community Foundation. I, I, I write video games and movies. My last two projects were Street Fighter VI and um, Need for Speed Unbound. Um, I teach is my day job, and I am a futurist. My, my great project is I work on nar I wrote Narrative and Nubia with Karen Hunter of Curious XM Radio. So that, that's what I do. All right. That's what I'm talking about. All right. So, our idea when Jeff and we talked about this was, what is going on with black creators? Some of them create stuff and don't want to be black. Some of them want to create stuff and don't want to get to be seen. So I created some questions, asked this question, how do black creators get stuff made? How do, how do things happen? So the panel's job is I try to give you information about how you make things, how they make things. I'm eliminating their answers to less than two minutes. If you go for two minutes, I will berate you. <laughs> nah, you gotta have a shot. You gotta have a shot. You got right. to make my watch. to This is a late night panel, right? Boring. Yeah. Yeah. Shot, shot, shot. Yeah, shot. Yeah, shot. So I'm gonna make sure that y'all know. The rule is keep your answer under two minutes. 
Okay. All right, first question from me on the board. And go. <laughs> what are some strategies or initiatives that can empower black creatives to have more control over the narratives and representation in the industry? Jeff, you're up. All right. Um, I will say the most empowering strategy that I had was eliminating the gatekeepers by using Kickstarter. And I, I, I used GoFundMe and I've used Indiegogo. I actually used Indiegogo for the same comic that I did on Kickstarter and was not able to raise one fraction of the money. So being able to fund your product and being able to introduce it to a wide group of people and be able to create some excitement around it all happens when you see eight days left. Come on, y'all. Who's going to, you know, it's a rallying cry. Let's make this comic, you know. So um, I think Kickstarter crowdfunding really did it for me and um, amongst other things. So that's two minutes. All right. David, <laughs> you guys Kickstarter with success at all? Did you, did, did you use it at all? Yes, yes. Of course. Yeah, yes. Um, yeah, I've had three different Kickstarters and raised over like $60,000 on Kickstarter. Um, but I would say just having like a, a social media presence mm -hmm. and not being worried about like how many you know likes you get or the engagement. Just keep having like a social media presence and being online. And I say that just because like I think during the pandemic I shot this like Harriet Tubman Demon Slayer um, short and I was really proud of it. And it came out looking really cool. I think one of my friends, who's a great cinematographer, shot it for me. And I was like, oh, this is going to get a million likes. It's going to be dope as hell. And it got, like, I think, like, 200 views or something like that. So I was like, and I put all my money and resources into it, right? And it's during, like, the pandemic, the lockdown. And, you know, so, I, anywho, I went to, like, Wendy's to use the last nine dollars to buy a meal yes I, I should have got it but no I got, I got I got the classic triple I was very sad um, <laughs> and, 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 and one of my friends called me it was Sebastian Jones and he was like hey man I'm working with Apprentice Penny uh, we saw your uh, thing like it looks great like what are you doing with Harriet Tubman Demon Slayer I'm like I'm like, I'm like no he's like hey, hey man do, do you want to like talk about making it into a TV show. And you know, like it could have, so I just say that because uh, if a million people see your thing, if a million people see it and like it, you know, it might not be the 200 people that can be effective mm -hmm. and actually push it to yeah. be something um, that other people like see or develop. So have a loud social media presence, have a, a loud unproblematic social media presence. And, and also just show off your personality because we want to see the thing that you created and we also want to meet you um, who's behind it and just be vulnerable and yeah, that's it. This is a great question for a PR executive. What's <laughs> on the stage? Uh, Leslie, you'd like to talk about that a little bit? Hello everybody. I did not hear the question. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> What are some strategies <laughs> or initiatives that can empower black creatives to have more control over their narratives and representation in the industry? So I can speak to representation. Okay. Um, so as he just kind of caught me out, um, I am a publicist of the entertainment industry, and I have been doing it for 20 years. And some of the key things that I see in terms of representation is like um, a lot of people kind of what you were saying, like you thought that you were going to get like all these views and all of this stuff on this product that you did, um, but the right person saw it. And so when you have like somebody like me, like a publicist, you know, um, what we do is we cheerlead for you. We, we try to get you into doors, into rooms that you may not be able to get in on your own. Um, I usually tell people that don't have a budget that can afford a publicist to do the, D, the DIY strategy which is to get your stuff on the social media, which is to put it in all forms or fashion or any way that you can get it out. Because the main thing that you just said, which is so key, is, is that if 10 people see your video and that one right person see it, it's a win for you, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it's gonna be that life changing deal. Um, I, I actually met somebody recently who that happened to. Um, I think he said that only a few people saw his video, but one of those people just happened to be the right person. And um, next thing I know, I'm gonna meet on the Sony lot. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I will say to that. Mm -hmm. 
We've got three great Kickstarter, social media. Are there any other strategies you recommend? So about that, Mark? Yeah, I'm a, um, Are you, I'm a you got your part right there. Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> The strategies uh, to rob people. <laughs> rob people, everyone. That's no, but strategy. honestly, it's, uh, it's actually really, um, there, there's one thing that literally anybody can do, which is be yourself. Um, one of the things that we see a lot happening, even if we go into like looking at, you know, a lot of Hollywood or whatever, a lot of folks with a lot of money out there, is a lot of times they're copying stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's actually a really bad strategy. Um, the best thing that you can do is be unique. Right, because that will allow you to stand out, and I've seen it not just in my own work but in others as well. Right, and they got all kind of fancy words for it niche and et cetera, et cetera. Right, but what can you do to make yourself irreplaceable mm. that you can't be copied? Right, that no one else can do what you're doing, and a lot of times that's just being yourself because we're all so unique. So, the more authentic you are to yourself and refine that, the more that you're going to be able to stand out. And then you just got to be a little patient, and you, there will, you will have your own following. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna add that real quick. Some of you don't. Some of us don't don't study our own culture enough. Right. Yes. Don't study our history enough. So you, if you have no ideas to pull from, you don't you don't read enough. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you're struggling, you're gonna be creator. You're like, I don't know how to make something that I'm gonna copy. That means you need to go a deep dive and read some things that you have never read before. You need to go to a deep dive and see things that you've seen before so you have somewhere to pull from. Because just your own experience may not be enough to create something unique. So you need to pull from things that are ancient, that are unique, that things that stories are not told. Do a heavy amount of research, not about movies and television, but about history and stories that have not been told. Um, let me just add on, because I was about to say what you said. And I jumped it so early. Um, but to the narratives part, let's not Wikipedia ourselves. And, and by, the say, by, time, by the way I say that, I mean, I use Wikipedia as a starting point. And I never accept that meme that's posted as the actual use of reading the article. And, and when I say read the article, that means get to know what the history is behind something. And then that way, no matter what somebody else's opinion of it is, or what else, whatever else they say about it, you know the real history. Then, because when we're talking about um, fiction, we're talking about lies, right? Stretching of truth, exaggerations. If you don't take time to know the truth, you're going to get lost in the lie of the narrative. Mm -hmm. So if I say, I'm going to write a black Columbus story, and he's going to discover Europe, you understand? But I have to understand what the real Columbus story was before mm -hmm. I create the lie about Columbus mm -hmm. because it's like that out here in fiction. So, like you said, deep dive into it, learn the real source code of all the things that you talk about so that way when you distort them with your exaggeration or your lie or your fictional story, you know what you're lying about. So I give you two. 50% of all cowboys are black. Right. Yeah. That's a story. That's lots of stories. But the note, everybody, a lot of people heard that. 32% of all pirates are black. How about that? You ain't never seen a black pirate story. Uh, I haven't. <laughs> I just let My you know. bad. <laughs> I live in Miami with Black Caesar. <laughs> Google him. All right, next question. Should black creatives lean into the use of artificial intelligence? And creative endeavors. Oh. No, <laughs> don't do it. No. No AI. No shortcuts. Take the long way. Figure it out. No, no AI. No AI. No AI. No AI. I'm going to counter that. Yeah, Next question. <laughs> I'm saying it for a second. Hire an editor. Next question. Oh, no, definitely do that. Definitely Hire do that. an artist. Sorry, everyone. I'm so sorry. What about I'm very passionate effects? about this. Can you use well, it in Adobe Magic Effects? Can you use it in, in visual effect programs? Okay, so, so let me ask a question first. I know we got to protest no AI, right? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an English teacher, okay? I teach 12th grade and I battle chat 
GPT all the time, and I tell my kids, I'm going to catch you. Okay. <laughs> I'm not teaching a little computer. I'm teaching a human, and I need you to be the computer. All right? But my question is, let's define what AI is. Because we can say no AI and use Grammarly. Right. We can say no AI and use right. Google Maps. Or, or right. Right. You know, so I, I think we need to talk about what the level is and what the usage level of it is because um, sometimes it saves money for a certain level of things, but you don't use it for your finished product. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can use it You can because right now I said Wikipedia. You can Google and it's going to be an AI Googling. So are we saying in my day, when we used to go to the library and go through microfiche, yeah, you know what I'm say saying? saying? With, with, so with Wikipedia is an AI. Comments. And ain't nobody going to say, hey, go to the library and do the way the research, the way research was meant, you know, with the microfiche, son. No, <laughs> no. Technology is a tool. AI so, is a tool. So Learn to use the tools that's out here and don't become a, a, a victim of the tool. This is your best brain right here. All those are are tools because it's not intelligent. So, it's just a tool. So that's, I was going to jump into that and I was going to say, you know, when we talk about AI, when we talk about artificial intelligence, it's either one of those two things. It's either a tool or it's a weapon, right? right? So people weaponize things that they don't understand a lot of the times, right? Uh, well, we t and, you know, I'm, I'm a school educator by day, so we, we are, <laughs> yeah, so we, we are battling that battle with uh, AI. Mm -hmm. But when we look at it as a tool, and you're talking about doing comparative text, if you wanted to look at the historical aspect of, of pirates and they wanted to compare it to uh, something that actually happened in Kimmy, you know, and being able to make a comparative analysis, you can use uh, the AI to be able to do that, to be able to not only uh, use that to do a summary, but then get a structure to, you know, your story, your plot, you know, your outline that you're looking to build, be looking to build later on. Now, the creativity uh, aspect of all this, wow, this is serious. You see, you pissed off God. God said, <laughs> said <"No, laughs> you are Don't try to shake that Listen to that sheer butter Negro named Carlton. Well, I tell you, well, I tell you. Well, we get it all here. This is my That was applause. That was applause. God was applause. Okay, so I'll change the narrative. That's right. It's how you interpret it. So it's something up to the applause. Keep on, Prince He's like, just what you have to say. Oh yeah, definitely. So you're gonna have to embrace it and figure out what and how you want to use it and how it's going to work and what you're doing in your projects. Also, um, what he just said, which is you're gonna either use it as a tool or as a weapon. Right. Um, I think editors use it to kind of get like a guideline for a project, and then they'll come in and add their own, you know, um, edits or cuts to it or whatever they want to mm -hmm. add to it. So it's definitely here to stay. So. How do you want to do with that information? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm going to say it like this. Honestly, we need to not be afraid of technology. I'm going to kind of take it back to, like I said, I'm a, a musician and producer. All this. I'm going to take it back to like some stuff my pops was saying because he like played, played the piano too, right? He was like, man, I'm tired of all these new cats and they got there because he'll see me on the on a computer with Pro Tools or whatever. Right, like, right. Yeah. yeah. Preset like, Back in my day, we had none of that, man. We Auto tools. Listen, we had a stack. So human we operator. didn't have, like, you know what I'm saying? You couldn't do none of that, man. We had to have a grand piano. Yeah. We couldn't have. But, like, I think the thing that we're all saying here, too, is there's an ethical use of technology. Oh, yeah, definitely. But the truth is, is that technology is here, period, right? And we need to understand how to use it. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, is that AI has actually been around for decades, right? Okay, yeah. Like spell check, all of this stuff. AI has actually been around Absolutely. for a long time. The reason why we're starting to get very concerned with it is because the sophistication and the power of it has become so strong that we're seeing the damage that it could potentially do. Mm -hmm. But just like all of these other forms of technology, we don't need to be afraid of it. We just need to be mindful of how it's being used. So we're having the, the right discussions 
but that doesn't mean that we need to avoid it completely. Because what's going to happen is, right, we exist in a world, right? And right now, I'm, uh, you know, I'm in this room with my melanated folks, so I'm talking about us right now. We exist oh, yeah. in a world with other people, so we need to be mindful of what's going on, right? And we don't want to completely alienate ourselves from a powerful technology just because it could be misused. Let's yeah. learn how to not misuse it, but still use it to empower ourselves. Because very much so, AI won't replace a person, but a person who knows how to use AI will replace a person who does not. Yeah. Wow. And, I, and I'm going to say to David, who doesn't use um, self-checkout or any of these other things that are available <laughs> uh, to people, because so he's not about <laughs> job <laughs> creation or anything like that. So I'm just saying, <laughs> you know. I don't have a problem doing self-checkout or having, you know, someone put an apostrophe in my stuff. I have a problem <laughs> if someone just says AI can you I mean, but it's AI. Script? We're talking about AI here. So this is what we're talking about. You can't. You can't Pick and choose when you want to use AI. You just talk about for creative. AI cleans my house. Give me that map. Give me that map to find out. Again, to, to, to correct an apostrophe or a semicolon, I have problems with people saying, Man, I can't write this script. AI, write this entire script. Oh, no, no. And, 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 AI, so, and, I and to, to understand, this I, album I've actually done a whole podcast this on this whole thing. The, the creativity of the human being is always going to be an element that is always going to be a part of the creative process. Um, so when we look at all of this from script writing to writing and narrative and everything, of course, you may be using some tool, Grammarly or, or AI or whatever, to do your editing and everything. But I think we're, you know, um, as we look at Hollywood and the industry and everything, we're going to get to a point where you want to see the creative process. And the behind the scenes is going to be so, so important because of tools like AI and everything, um, because the value of what people are putting the effort and the sweat and tears and the long hours, people want to see that, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And that's something that AI can't produce. So being able to see that actual process actually come out, that's going to be something that's going to be another layer to your project uh, when they're going to be showing those behind the scenes, those bloopers, those, those uh, real live cuts to show that, look, this is an authentic product and authenticity is going to be the, the new wave that everyone's going to kind of jump into. And you can't, you can't substitute authenticity with that. All right. All right. We're going to move on. We're going to happy, move on. happy medium. All right. We love each other. Okay. Your answer is not to get started. Oh, yeah. We go way back. We go way back. We're fine. <laughs> the, the rule is your answer is not to get started. Black, kids, black ideas have historically been underfunded. What innovative strategies can be explore to secure funding for black creative projects and secure financial support for their realization? And your answer is not to so. Right, right. So you can answer, but you can oh, 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 okay. Any of you. I'll, I'll, I'll go. go. Oh, just I, 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 before, before there was Kickstarter, um, I um, had a friend who funded his comic book through supporting other businesses by allowing them to take out advertisements. And I implored that into my other forms of, of, of funding. And I allow ads in my comic books. Um, I almost do like business cards. I have a whole page where it's like yearbook. Where you can take out a business card ad, you get a comic book, and you get your business card in there. I even did a full out um, uh, written ads. So like you would see Superman holding a Coca-Cola. I would write one of my characters holding somebody's product if they paid me, and I put that ad in my comic book. So my friend had original Haitian patties. I did a whole thing where the kids was hungry, and I took an ad that they had did for Kool-Aid and remixed it and wrote them an original one where they was like, I want some patties. And it was like a little commercial, and it was in my comic book, you know? So that, those are some creative ways you know, that, that, that you can fund your comic book short of selling sweet potato pies and building a college like Mary McLeod Bethune or was it Bethune Cookman College? <laughs> so you could do a fish fry for your comic book. <laughs> Those work. Go ahead and let me know. Just rob white people, everyone. 
Make sure it's at night. Make sure you have someone else uh, to be to, to help you out, uh, sir. Run after this. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm, this was a joke. This was a joke. This was a joke. This was a joke. <laughs> it does not reflect the opinion. This was a joke. I'll co-sign that. All right, that was a joke, everyone. Damn. I'll take it. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I, I just think whatever you make, just make sure it's of undeniable quality, because undeniable quality is universal and will resonate with mm -hmm. everybody. And um, yeah, make the thing of the highest quality that you can do, and have passion with it. Be vulnerable about it, and that is contagious. You know, again, passion is contagious to mm -hmm. everybody. And if they see something that's like cool or um, it, it's done well, done of the highest quality, like like they'll buy it and they'll invest into it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's yeah. my I was kind of woke up, and what I mean is, I was raised like David. Highest quality is what's put out, but the newer generation of creators. <laughs> shows you the journey of what they're doing. They start from the very scratch. Like, mm -hmm. I got a piece of bucket of shrimp, watch me make this into something. Like, they, they start early, and the people that are funding them take the journey of creation with them. Wow. I've seen both yes. strategies yes. work now. It's mm -hmm. not only like being perfect and on the, putting it out there, but also showing people what you're doing on, on, on the way has also been some way, uh, some way to have gotten money and gotten your process funded. I don't know if you agree with that, it's my process, but I've seen people do it that, well, yeah, yeah, showing behind the scenes stuff. Like, uh, I'm sorry. Um, no, I was just saying, like, to piggyback off that, yes, like, even it goes back to even social media, even showing, like, the behind the scenes stuff, you mm -hmm. know, even showing, like, sketches, or even showing, like, like I'll, I'll even share art that people that I'm collaborating with, like, the, the early stages of it and the behind the scenes of it from, from like, pencils, inks, um, colors. Or then I have one thing where it's like me like this, and it's like you know I'm having writer's block or something like that, you know, and you know just let people into that vulnerable experience. Mm -hmm. And they're like, we'll give that Negro money. Leslie, you're up. I'm gonna kind of contradict what you guys are saying about putting out your best. Um, sometimes it's um, just putting out the work, and each time you put out a different project. You get better and better and better with it. That's so me. it's not necessarily having to put out your best work out the box. It's what I like to call the Issa Rae or the Clinton Bronson effect, where they were putting out more and more and more content. And the more the longer the more content they put out, the better it got. The more that we were all engaged to it and drawn into it. Um, I have a young director that I'm working with right now, and um, last year he put out six films on YouTube. Um, very short, 15, 20 minutes. Um, he's actually working on his seventh film, um, and we are talking to Tubi now. And so um, he is putting a lot of work. Um, somehow he trusts me. I don't know what it is about me. Um, but when I watch his projects, I'm like, oh, that's great. He's been self funding them. He does, you know, he gets um, local students or whoever he needs to fit into um, these projects that he has. I mean, even to the, the latest one that he just did, he it was involved in strip club. And one of the people that he found on Craigslist, um, happened to be a stripper, happened to know the boss lady um, working for her new strip club. And so now he's shooting it this weekend in her club. And the script of it was really good, and that's the one that we're talking to to be about. So it's not necessarily always about putting out the best. It's just growing and getting better and learning with each project. And in terms of finding them, um, one of the things that I was going to say,